John Wanamaker was one of the world's leading merchants creating the first department store in Philadelphia. Turn around and look east down Market Street. See Macy's? That was formerly the home of the John Wanamaker department store. You can still hear the Wanamaker organ, which has been playing since the store opened in 1911. It is now considered the world's largest performing pipe organ. He wanted to bring culture to the masses. He did it with that organ, and he also did it with art installations that really set Wanamakers apart from the competition. My name is Michael Lasicki, the author of Wanamakers Meet Me at the Eagle. It was the hub of activity. People dressed up to go into Wanamakers. I'm Jenny Funches, and I work at Macy's Visitor Center, but I was also a former employee of the John Wanamaker Department Store. Anyone that had meetings in Philadelphia or wanted to meet someone for lunch, they would say, meet me at the Eagle. And many people still do that. Wanamaker was born on July 11, 1838, and he grew up in the Gray's Ferry section of South Philadelphia. His father was a brickmaker. When he was a boy, he went into an establishment, bought a gift for his mother, and while the storekeeper was wrapping it, John Wanamaker said, oh, wait a minute, I would rather have this. And the storekeeper responded by saying, nope, son, you've already purchased that other one. You have to stay with that. John Wanamaker then later in life said, if ever I own a store, I want to treat my customers fairly. My name is William Zolker. I'm the author of the book, John Wanamaker, King of Merchants. He came up with so many innovations that are now in place today. The first refund, guaranteed merchandise, and although he didn't invent the price tag, he really popularized it. Most people think of John Wanamaker as a merchant, but he was far more than that. He was a member of the Board of Education of the City of Philadelphia. He was Postmaster General of the United States for four years, and he was also a man of deep religious faith. I feel that Wanamaker really followed his religious and moral philosophies and beliefs when he ran his store. Wanamaker was a very progressive merchant, especially with employee relations. He developed a profit-sharing policy. He developed a vacation pay, a mutual aid society that provided sick and death benefits, medical help he also provided. He felt the need to educate his employees if they wished to by creating a commercial institute on their property. That's where he trained boys and girls to become not only educated before public education was so accessible, but he also taught them how to do business, how to work in a store. The statue was erected just a few months after he died in 1922. Over 400,000 Philadelphians helped raise $35,000 in order to complete the statue, which was designed by John Massey Rind, the famous sculptor. That is more money than was actually needed for the cost of making this sculpture. And most of that money came from the boys and girls who contributed their pennies, nickels, and dimes in the public school system of Philadelphia. Now look at the inscription at the base of the statue that just says, John Wanamaker Citizen, and lists his date of birth and his date of death. It's an inscription that actually he said that was all he wanted on his memorial stone. I'm sure he didn't want to be showing that he was uh, too proud about those things or boasting about those things. Just an ordinary citizen. 